Talk Podcast, and we are back, season three, and we have another After Dark episode. And tonight, we have Tanya Tate with us on the couch. Hello, hello. Thank you for coming and joining us on the Private Talk After Dark couch. It's been some time, so I'm excited to catch up with you, see what you've been going, what's been going on with you. You have all kinds of new things that you're doing. I'm excited to talk about all this stuff, so... What's that? What, what's been going on with you, Tanya? Hi, Alexis. Hi. <laughs> it's like I was waiting to get a little breath in. Oh, thank you for inviting me. It's great. Of course. Um, yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it, since we've seen each other? It's yeah. Like, I think it's probably been one of the Exotica shows. That I reckon that's the last time that we saw each other. For sure, because I feel like around that time, like towards the end, like that was really the only things I really was going to. So I would only be as an adult thing, and I definitely always saw you at the Boots um, Exotica, but I can't remember when. But I want to say, because of just life, it's probably been two years. Because it's like probably with, been. Yeah. yeah, like I feel like because right bef- up into that point, you know, we were going to shows. It was like every, you know, every three or four months or whatever. So it was kind yeah. of, you know, all those things you see, you took for granted, I guess, in certain times and realized, you know, how much we did see each other, but yeah. how little we didn't kind of <laughs> in the same token. But um, but, but yeah, those those been, you know, that's definitely a, a change in things, but I'm glad to see you on the couch. So what, what were you doing in that time? Did you... What were you doing? What have I been doing? I kind of disappeared, didn't I? I'm I'm still out there. Um, but in that time, you know, back in 2017, I had a baby. So I kind of took a step back from being more so in the public eye. Um, I have Star Factory PR, which is a publicity company. So I kind of continued to run that. I was still active on social media. Um, and, you know, we've got OnlyFans, we've got Sex Panther. And then once COVID hit, it was kind of, you know, suddenly everyone was doing it and the traffic just boomed. And mm-hmm. I was like... <laughs> That's what I always say, because it's funny because people talk about like, oh, did you like it? Because, you know, or OnlyFans or COVID increased OnlyFans. And I'm like, I was always doing really good and not to be like, oh, big ego, but I had one. I have more time now to dedicate it to at the time when the world shut down because I... It wasn't traveling as much, so I I definitely gave more content afterwards, but it was always around. It definitely gave more traffic, for sure. So I feel like it just gave us another outlet to give more people what they wanted of us. I think for me, it kind of become like a new lease of life for me because I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything. You know, I couldn't even go out. I've I've got a a child, and I I was putting him in school then. (laughs) It's like, let's get you in school oh, now I've got more time on my hands. Yeah. So I could make more content. You know, all my content on my OnlyFans, it's the only place really where they can find brand new content of me. Amazing. Yeah, so it's all solo stuff. Um, A lot of it, you know, the fans tell us what they like. Mm -hmm. We give them what they want. Um, I do a lot of custom movies as well. Um, And I kind of interact that with the Sex Panther as well. Sex Panther is kind of like OnlyFans for me, but, you know, it's more direct. The phone base, yeah, texting calls. and more instantaneous, yeah. So if they want to kind of text me there and then it comes straight through to my phone. Whereas OnlyFans, they're on the rotation. You've got to wait till I get through all those DMs and then I'll get back to you again. But Sex Panther is very instant. They can call me straight away. They can video chat with me straight away. So do you like Sex Panther uh, more? like both both yeah so they do different things you know yeah. what I mean? so it's kind of a little bit of you know yeah I, I think I, li- I like a lot about the sex plan that it's really instant and you can kind of really get to know somebody you know um and then you're like oh yeah they, they kind of jump to the front of the queue when it's a sexton but with the only fans i like it that you can just give a little bit of everything to someone you know they can come in they can sit in the dms they can see what you're sending out they can go to your wall well, so like you said, it's, it's customized to your fan. They're telling you what yes. they want specifically instead of doing a broad mass of things, which yeah. is cool because you get to really know who your fans really are. And the like, engagement is really cool because like with yourself and me included, it's like, you know, we don't shoot other scenes with our solo stuff, but people still want to see stuff from us. So it's like yep. those are the, you know, our fans still want us. And that's the great part is because what we want to feel comfortable doing, that's what we do on that platform. And exactly. you know, so it's a win-win. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I took a step back from Girl Girl. I was shooting girl girl scenes up until 2016 and I just did my first girl girl scene exclusively for my only fans with Phoenix Marie nice so I was like Big combo you, you, well, you, you know you've got to get a hot a hot you and you know someone like yourself Alexis you know you've been there you're you're kind of in the industry you're very well known 
you know, I, I, I could have chose you. <laughs> well, I, I don't shoot porn anymore. I don't She's shoot like, any no. scene. So that was so getting me a bit of a hard sell. But oh. yes, I understand what you're saying. It's, you know, you want something, you want like a wow factor. And not that yeah. you don't have your own wow factor by yourself included, but you want, you know, you can't fuck yourself. I mean, you can, but now you're, well, you you're, you're, you're wanting to do more than that. Is the There's thing. only you so many something. things that you can do with yourself, you know, the things that you like to do. And I, I think the fans were like crying out, we want to see porn, we want to see porn. Okay, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you a girl-girl scene. And then it's still on social media. Where can we see your new movies? Of course, you're like, open your eyes. I just released a new scene. It's on OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh, uh, can you shoot for it's some production company? I'm like, they don't realize you shoot for them. You get paid one fee and they just reuse it everywhere. And we don't make any more money from it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we don't necessarily have a say in what's going to be in that scene. So, you know, for me, it was giving back to the fans, you know. For sure. I mean, and, and definitely for, you know, an entrepreneur and so, you know, the business side of everything, you know, too, you, you get to see, like, you, you're, it's your own company, your own production company, and it really gave you that kind of leeway to kind of get control back of yourself and in the industry of what you wanted to produce, as some, whatever you wanted on your OnlyFans. Yeah. Which is a really cool thing to do. So how do you feel like the transition of you, you know, you didn't do any scenes for a while, you did this big scene with Phoenix Marie, was it awkward coming back in like talk about the transition of you you know having a baby and now you're you know, doing scenes again you didn't do scenes for other than with yourself yeah and a sexy toy yeah. you know what I mean how was the transition of now actually doing an actual scene you, you know you you have a baby and um I'm not saying that you've not you've not got any. I kids. don't have any kids now <laughs> I, I have fur babies I have fur babies <laughs> your doggies um Having a child, you know, your body changes and then coming back and being straight in the eye of the camera and, you know, the fans can be very critical. They can be very supportive as well. So for you as a person, putting yourself back there in the in the limelight again, if you're like, you know, taking your clothes off, it's not easy at first to kind of be like, okay, my body's changed and then trying to get your body back mm -hmm. to kind of how it was. Um, and for me, that... That took a little bit of time, you know, just from kind of toning up a yeah. lot um, to... Do you feel like you were, you were harder on yourself because you wanted to get back into, like, what you... Expectation of your head of what you your fans want to say? Because I feel like <laughs> yes. with me... I started as a curvy girl. I always was like, I'd always say, like, I make jokes. and be like, oh, I'd be the girl that eat a cheeseburger on set and da, 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 all the, you know, funny things. Is But in a sense, is like, I always felt comfortable if you're skinny, fat, in between, you're in your best shape, whatever. There's something that someone's always going to have a problem with. Oh, yeah. And that's when I think, you know, and it's hard because we are in the limelight and people see, you know, with all these new cameras and all these things that you can see, it's like, it sucks that we feel that way. But, you know, it's hard not to. You can't say, you know, your feelings aren't valid, but you're a beautiful woman regardless before, after, you know, and all these things. And you should just, it's just more, more to you now. You know, it's the different yeah. layers of peeling back of who you are, you know, and I think it's a beautiful thing. It's feeling confident as well, you know, in yourself. So I, I think that kind of took a little bit of a while for me to get back to feeling like that. But, you know, working out and um, <laughs> I actually did something called M Sculpt where they stick these like pads on you, these electric pads on your stomach and your backside. And that's I've heard about that. How does how is that? I've just been for one session today in Encino. Dr. Persky's office, he's great, my my face doctor and body doctor. Okay. Um sticks it on it's like doing 20,000 crunches and 20,000 so do you squats. see immediate results or something you have to go back a couple of times like well they, they say go back a couple of times a week for a few weeks to get your course in um but I've had it done before I literally I was working out and then I went and kind of did this machine when I was about after like post-pregnancy like nine months and I it kind of toned me back again it wasn't mm -hmm. how it was yeah and um, but it it, but it, it made was it different yeah it, it was quite dramatic actually yeah. and i've probably got a six pack sick, sitting under it i'll show you after hey, we finish. I like it. <laughs> show me girl show me <laughs> and also something else that i wanted to have done um my boobs they changed you know pregnancy you put on a lot of weight and they stretched and i was just like okay i went a whole cup size smaller mm -hmm. so I've literally just had surgery a, few, a couple of months ago where they took the implant out did an uplift and replaced them so you look great thank you yeah you look great how do, how do you feel do you feel back to yourself do you feel um, they're, you know? they're still not quite there okay. they're still healing you know um 
well, they'll be there soon. They're just yeah. taking a little bit longer. Yeah, no, like, for sure. They'll be like, they'll be, they'll be done. And I'm like, oh, okay, just taking a little bit longer to heal. But it makes, it's something that I wanted to do for myself, you know, yeah. just to kind of try and get your body back. Yeah. So, so it is, it, it is coming back into shooting again, being confident in front of the camera, you know, thinking that you've got your body how it is. And of course, we're all getting older as well. So you, you kind of, combating the age it's as well as post-pregnancy it's age so yeah i definitely feel a lot more confident in my body and amazing to you hear. know i'm i'm really happy that i did my girl girl scene with phoenix marie and you know do you plan on doing more scenes like for your site like I, more I'd girl quite, girl scenes i'd quite like to because i think it was quite well received and i like the fact you know that i was the director i was the owner you know if i was going to do it with another girl it would be someone you know who was the same type you know the same yeah. so can level. you only can you only see it on your only fans or can you see it on phoenix Marie's? oh phoenix well? marie's as well yeah so yes. it's a trade it was a trade yeah. yeah awesome so you know doing a trade with somebody that you know it's going to go behind a paywall as well and not just going to be like hey Twitter yeah for <laughs> sure everybody has what you're giving out yeah yeah because I just wanted it to be like the only place where you could come and see make it sacred I like yeah. it I like yeah. that so what would you say your like dream next you know if you could put it out there and speak it into the existence of your next girl girl scenes what would you what would you do do you know I've actually never really done a scene where I've taken a strap on Okay. Um, Is that I, something that excites you? I'd quite like to try it. Yeah. Yeah. To, to Like, I'm always kind of the dominant one, kind yeah. of like giving it, like I've used a strap on on, mm -hmm. on somebody else, on the guys, on girls. Um, but I've never really thought, oh, yeah. I'm Been gonna, the submissive one and actually yeah. just took it. Yeah. So I've, I'm just thinking, maybe I'll just give That's them. hot. I, I'll do that with someone. And, I, you know, I quite like a lot of wet stuff, so maybe I'm just going to go for a little bit more wetness going on there. Mm, yeah. Sexy, sexy, Miss Tanya Tate. I like it. I like <laughs> where you're going with this. I like where you're going with this. So Girl Girl is more to come for your OnlyFans. I'm excited about that too. I just like, I did get excited about people who like what you're doing and it seems like you've definitely you know you took some time off which is much needed yeah. to just to like reset with everything and start this new chapter as well but you can see like you're really wanting to do it like it's like a crave to do it which is exciting because yeah. it's like why we chose to do adult is because we liked having sex and whatnot exactly. more to show our art and show our fans what it is to get it on your only fans exactly and I, and I mean, I, I, I do listen to the fans. They are asking for boy-girl. Will I do another boy-girl scene? Will I hire a guy to do boy-girl scene with? I'm not going to say that's out of possibility. You know, it's something that I've, I've thought about. I'm still undecided. That wouldn't be a trade. No <laughs> I would, trade allowed. I would, no trades allowed when it comes to guys. So it's not off the table. It's not off the table, no. And I think I'd quite like to do a strap-on, a brand new strap-on scene with a guy. With a guy? They, they have a lot of fans that really like that. Is and that actually, something that you did a lot of scenes like that? I, or? I did a few. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I, received really well. Your yeah. fans are begging for more. Well, the, the, especially the ones that like... The, the, there's a lot of guys that do like that, but they don't like to admit it. Okay. You so know? it's like the sneaky, like taboo mm -hmm. things like yeah. that. So it's kind of like sneaking in, you know, just... Does it turn it. you on to do it or do you just do it because you have to do it? Oh, no, I love it. You love it? Oh, yeah, it's like the power. So your pussy's wet doing it. Yes. Like you like get it's, off to doing it. It's like for me, I don't know. Like I just oh, yeah. can't... The reason why for myself, and stop me in the code is, is that I am very alpha myself, but I feel like if... If I did that to a man, I don't know if I could come back from not A, either wanting to do it again, B, seeing if I liked it or not, because a lot of people aren't into that. And then it's like, where do you, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I just, there's a lot of I don't knows if I can just cross. <laughs> so I just never, I just never went there. I had like one person ask me, I'm like, absolutely not. Like, I don't think, and I don't think I could keep a straight face because I'm not naturally turned on to it. Now, I don't know that if I couldn't get to that, but like, I'd probably laugh. Like, I don't know. Like, 
<laughs> like, how do you keep, like, what do you tell a man when you have a fake dick inside his ass? And be serious. Well, I'm on. Be that's serious, I, Tanya. That tell is, me. That is what I do. I want the truth. I want the truth. What do you say? <laughs> I do it with guys that really like all, it. I need to know. You know, a guy that's really into having something shoved up his ass. You know, a guy that's really into watching stuff like that. So that's the part that turns you on. Yeah, just knowing that, you, you know, I'm in control of that guy. I've th That guy is giving his ass to me. But I how own. do you know how far to go? Because there's no feeling in your fake dick. And so how do you know, like, what's too far to go to give him it all? You kind of feel it. You I know, need, you, I can start, you, you, would, you would start off slow. So you'd be able to kind of feel it. And if trust me, if it went too far, then you'd find out. But is he going to scream? I I think. Have you ever made someone pass out from putting a dick in them? No. I mean, wait. How do you say that properly? Fucking them and that pegging them. Right. Pegging, pegging yeah, them. Yes, pegging. Peg. I was like, there's a term for it. I need to know. Yeah. Yeah. So has anybody ever passed out? No. No, because I. I I've ever, I, has anybody ever shit on you? No. Because the guys that from do the toy, it, not like you know, in, that, in a fetishy weird way. You're like, what are you, where are you going with this? Alexis? I'm like, wait, wait, no, we not any do hard not, sports. Not any of those things. But as far as like you know, because you never know what's gonna happen. Like, no, okay. um, no, because the the guys, you know, I don't, I haven't done anal. I don't do anal, so I don't know. You know, like the preparation, the preparation. Of what you get to, yeah, yeah, the the guys that are into it, they prepare, they fully prepare, okay. so they're, they're all cleaned out. All right. So before war, they're they're gonna know what's going down. So it's like a whole session thing. It's yeah, like, it's, whatever. It's but. not like it's some guy that. See, doesn't I'm a really control know what freak. I don't do a lot of you know either. I've done some you know like maybe a handful in, in my porn career, nice. but it's I'm a control freak. I'm like, what if what if something happens? Like, oh my god, like what if I? So I always had to be really horny or like get myself into those things because I did like it at certain points when I'm doing it obviously but like the thought of just being like you can't see what's yeah going but on i can't behind. feel that i'm fucking because i don't it's not real like i don't have a dick i wish i could have it for a day and see like how it felt <laughs> and then i'd be like oh now i know what you're talking about <laughs> now i know how far to go now i know what that noise is see i just like i like that see there's all kinds it's of like the power but i love a lot of the talking as well you know like a lot of the dirty talk and the controller and the can you give us a sample of your dirty talk oh Text you know, <laughs> can you please like, give it to me i need this dirty talk tanya you that dirty talk you just you just want to open your legs don't you Alexis? Text talking to the mic tanya oh do you want me to go closer yes do you want me to go closer please do is this close enough not oh. close enough oh oh not close enough to your pussy i don't think i'm just gonna open your legs and stick my lovely dog deep inside just use my fingers to just stick them inside your Alexis, just fucking open your legs, you dirty. She girl. knows what she's doing. <laughs> to talk after dark. You better be liking this episode because it's getting hot. That was hot. I mean, I like it. I'm very into tones. I'm into like all those things. Which you know, I really like. You know, did you ever do the babe stations? Like, Wait, do you remember me and you being in the airport on the way home after we both did the baby station chant? We've both been in London together at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were on the same flight home. We were on completely different parts of the airplane. We weren't sitting near each other, but we were, we were at the airport. I have a horrible memory. I smoke a lot of weed. I'm sorry. And I drink <laughs> a lot of alcohol, especially at those times. But who knows? <laughs> but, I, but, I we did, but we did Studio 66 together, though? I don't think. No, I don't. We were there in London at the same time. Okay. But I don't think we were in the studio at the same time. Okay. I think we were probably on different nights because okay. they probably put Makes you sense. on. I'm like, hold on, wait. How did I get... Because those, those days were, like, <laughs> crucial because it was, like... 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. shifts. Oh. And then, like, you never fully, like, really adjust because you already flew across the world <laughs> to get to there. And then, yeah, and then I was dirty talking to everybody. But that's how my dirty talk got great, which at yes. first, I mean, I never, I was okay, I feel like. I think I just went up, but that opened up to my vocabulary of things. Yeah. And just after that, it was just the floodgates were open and. I, a I, dirty mouth was formed. <laughs> I just love the dirty talk. You know, I I was seven years, over seven years, I was a host on Vivid Radio on Sirius XM. So I had a Vivid Radio show too. Oh, you did? I you did, did you yes. did. Booty talk. Oh, yeah. Of course, naturally, anything booty. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's me. But no, my, yeah, mine those, was, those are fun. Yeah, mine was a Tanya Tate show, and it was like the intro. It was Debbie Diamond doing the intro of the Queen of Dirty Talk. Oh, And, yeah. you know, that was the intro. So for, for me, it was just the guys would just call in, and we'd have a question of the day, and literally I would just get the guys off of the Dirty Talk and give them the countdowns and tell them when they can and can't come. Hey, you know? I like it. Yes, ma'am. Talk to me. <laughs> Dirty. See what you can get at our OnlyFans? She's giving you a countdown. What better than that? <laughs> I do. I love the countdowns, you know. And it, you, you, I think you just like being in control. Like you like I because do. you're very like um, that that dominatrix, but not like over where it's like, you know, like I just want to listen to you. Like, I, okay, I can, sure. I can yes. be like, All right. I can be nurturing, mm -hmm. domineering, like loving, domineering, you know, like, uh, like the other day I had a guy and he wanted to do a video chat with me on Sex Panther and he said, he said, I've just lost my wife. He said, but I want you to be like a mummy. He said, I want you to be dominating. He said, but I want you to be um, non-disciplined. There's no discipline. I want you to be kind and loving. And I was like, okay, I can do that. And he was so happy. I could just tell. Like he was edging. He was, I, know, <laughs> I could see. <laughs> Eventually I was like, yes. A lot of guys Do you get that? Mommy. Do you get a lot of mommy play? Yes. That is like one of my big, my, my big gems. Because you're known for being, a, you know, a great MILF. Like, yes. you know what I mean? Like, it's so, was it always that way? Like, is like is this a big fetish in the world? There's a lot of mommy fetishes? I think, you know, when I started off in the industry, I was I was in my 30s when I started off. So, you know, I got older, you know, you the don't MILF. The, the MILFs. Well, I'm in my 40s now, so, you, you know. You look great. Thank you. Um, so I was getting, you know, like the, my mum's, like what my the friend's fetish. hot mum and all that mm. kind of stuff. And then it kind of progressed because I started directing for Philly Films, Lesbian, and I was in the scene as well. Um, and it was, uh, it was Lesbian Family Affairs. So we'd done a whole series of it where it was mummy and sister so and you daughter. Played a, like you became a character really. Like, yes. and so it was like, oh, I saw, it's like. Almost like when people in series get typecasted and you can always be like a Mr. Belding or whatever. Like now you're just like the mommy. Well, I did get, you know, cast a lot as the mummy or the auntie or, and, but I embraced it, mm -hmm. you know, that's what they like. But that's what works. I mean, I feel like you, it, I have, feel like, again, I see the whole, mo like the, the nurturing and the both sides of it to so like the commanding yeah. and like the whole, the give and take. Like, I feel like that's what draws people in is like yeah. that whole, that role play of like the two. It is, you know, I love the role play. Um, even sometimes it's like, they, they just like the strictness of me with the British voice and, yeah. you know, being that school teacher and keeping you back. Isn't it funny class. how, like, men really want to listen, but they don't? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> They're like, be my mommy, but don't give me guidelines and don't give me any rules, but tell me that you're my mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I just take over. Mm. Sorry, Mommy. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's an alarm that goes off every hour at this time. I don't really understand it. <gasps> Sorry about that. I know you know it happens. Like I might when I do my custom videos, people will be like, "Oh, what is that noise?" I'm like, "Sorry, it just happens." You're the lucky winner. Whoever gets the beep, <laughs> you get something special. <laughs> Make it a game because nothing can go. Well. Yes, mommy. So, what is something scenario wise like some like a typical mommy play like like a role play like in that like his the guidelines like what did you tell him that made like you he was about to edge like what do you tell someone in that fetish world like to make it the, it's just it's, mommy like it's, <laughs> it's just really you know a reference and so you know he can be you know come on son do you want to come into mommy's bed come and lie down okay. next to mommy do you want to come and lay on my boobs and suck on my lovely big massive breasts Oh, you like this suckling I on love it. the tone change. And, you know, oh, can mommy touch your cock, son? Is that okay? And, you know, I'm going to be stroking your cock now. And and it, sometimes it's the jerk off control, and I'm controlling them, you know, counting them on for 10, tell them to take the hands off for five, we count for five. You know, if I'm feeling really <laughs> dominant, I'll make them smack their cock really fucking hard five times, and mommy. I'll make them count. And if I can't hear it properly, I'll be like, you're not smacking hard enough. And I like to hear that. Ooh, mommy. When, when, you, when you sit in there, and it's so not always, it's not always, Alexis is laughing, you couldn't do this, Alexis. She I could laugh. never, I'm <laughs> blushing. Like, I can't even. I'd be like, if I'm on the phone, I'm like, I can't hear that. 
You're not smacking your cock hard enough, are you? Sorry, Smack mommy, it harder. Sorry, mommy. I'll smack it harder. I'll smack it harder. Good boy. Or oh, good girl. You know, I make you smack your pussy. Well, you've got to be into it. Yeah. You know, you've got to, you've got to like, you know, you got the guy on the phone. You've got to kind of judge what's he going to be into, yeah. what's he going to do. Are they silent or do they play back? Sometimes the silent. I, I think the silent calls are actually the hardest because you don't know where, which like direction to go to. Yeah, because you're like, okay, they might say a couple of lines or you might have spoke with them before and you can quickly scroll back, you know, hey, mommy, I want a phone call, but I need a silent phone call, sure. And so they call and then you've got to look, well, how many credits have they got? Have they only got five minutes or have they got 15 minutes? How much time do we got here? And it, because it's important because it's if, they, if they've something. only got five minutes, you want to buy the time, four minutes are up. You want to be making sure if it's a silent call, you want to be making sure, well, okay, I know you're nearly close now. Your well, countdown has enough time to be count down. Yeah, if they want a countdown, you know you've got to you you got to start it. You're going to be telling them, okay, like I know you're right, really at the edge. And if it's like a, a jerk off instruction, if it's a control, you're going to be like, well, you know, we're going to go as far as we can, and I want you to come by the time you know I get to twenty. So you've got to know. Sometimes they hide the credits, and you're like, bastard, how am I going to know? And then it cuts off, and I'm like, well, that saves you, right? Because you didn't tell no. me how many credits you have. So you have it down to like a science in your head like of what it is from tokens to minutes to every kind of <laughs> countdown like I, I could see your your head over there doing math of like oh okay like what am I gonna put here and I'm gonna well I try and give them the experience the yeah. total experience you know I try and make of course sure that's why they're that, calling you and doing your, yeah you're doing and your job that's why they call back yeah you know I get a lot of repeat guys that yeah. come back to me because they want to talk to me and you know they come back and they go no one else can do it like you can. And I say, I know. That's why your cock love is mine. Ooh, mommy told you what it was. I yeah, love that. They, they, they come back, you know, and I'm like, this is great. Is that your favorite fetish, you would say, like to do? Or like, is there something else that you, like your fans either request more or you like to do yourself personally? <sighs> well, that's the most requested and that's the easiest for me because yeah. I can I I could lie there. Sometimes I'm lying on my bed with my eyes closed, with my earbuds in, <laughs> just going over mummy talk. So, you know, I can do mummy talk, you know, they like booby talk, foot fetish. I have a lot of foot fetish guys. I'm a foot fetish person. Yeah. Like it. Just jerk off instruction. Yeah. Um and I have a interestingly, I have a lot of guys that like forced by and I was very quite shocked by this. It's where like a guy will come in and be like, oh, mummy, mummy, mummy. And all the mummy talk comes in. And suddenly it's like, you know, I've got this young, hot, well-hung boy toy. So mummy brings in the hot boy toy. And then the son is like, oh, but mummy, are you going to force me to suck up your boy toy's cock? Oh. So, or, is you know. Is this a new fetish going out there? I don't think it's new. I think it it just opened my eyes really that okay. I, I didn't realize that a lot of guys were into it. You know, like they're with the mummy, they're with someone that's like, you know, I, I have guys of all ages, but a lot of the guys, you know, they're younger than me or they like to be younger than me. So, you know, it's sometimes the only really time that daddy ever gets involved in my scenarios is when it's daddy coming in to fuck mummy and then son has to go down and lick his cock or, you know, Ah, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it, Daddy. Don't. Do it. I only do. I only do it if I know that they're into it. Alexis, I know. I, Alexis <laughs> is like, please don't call me with force by strap on or calling me mommy. I wouldn't know what to do. Like, I'm great at dirty talk, but they're, like, and I have, my dirty talk is, like, I can be very elaborate, and I have a really, like, extensive dirty mind and, like, imagination, but there's just some things, like, why I get curious and I ask, because I have, I don't even know where to start when you say that, and then it's, like, comical to me, but not in a bad and judgy way, but in a way of, like, it's silly to me that, like, I don't know those kinks, because I get people have different fetishes and things or whatever, and it's cool, because it's, it's just, whatever, it's just, it's, it's um it's fascinating to me and it's just very is a good and word. it's very it's i laugh when i get uncomfortable so i laugh because it's just funny to me 
<laughs> I think if someone called you, you'd be quite nervous. Over that. You'd be like, Maybe. just call Tanya Tate. I know. I'm like, <laughs> you have the wrong number, my friend Tanya. Let me let me forward my call. <laughs> I'm gonna meet your number real quick. Tanya Tate's uh, Sex Panther line is uh, no, but sexpanther.com slash Tanya Tate. There you go. You Thank heard you, it. Alexis. You better need to go and uh, text her right now because she's got a lot of good mommy talk, booby talk, a lot of talk that talking over here but what's funny is like so like on the stage like we go back to the studio 66 things is you never knew because each caller was different so I could do those like I'm really good at like rapid fire things like that but I don't really know if so no one ever asked me to be mommy but I don't feel like I look like mommy it, I don't really know it was different on studio 66 because um that would be everyone else would be listening in so yeah but you could have you could have the people who are silent or you could, people could do calling and talking to you or like they'd have to wait in the queue type thing it, it was the waiting in the queue guys you could see how many numbers you have and i always used to go mad the foot fetish guy you come on the phone and start talking to me and all the rest of the calls would go mm, uh, uh, because they'd, of what's they'd going all on. disappear because they didn't like you talking see, about feet i like, I didn't care about any of the numbers because I was there to do a job and I got a paid a flat rate, so I didn't know what any of that meant. So I was just talking to people. So I didn't know what that, you know, any of that I, meant. I, and, and I didn't give a fuck if anybody really called me or not because I was still getting paid. But I had fun doing it. Like, there was this one person, I remember, like, it was really... <laughs> I don't know. Like his name will probably come to me in the story, but he would call all the time. And the girls, everyone, like they, the girls that worked all the time, they couldn't really say anything to them because they'd get fired or if they got like somebody marks on their whatever thing, they'd get a certain, they'd get fired. Anyways, this guy called and he was talking about his, his wife that either, I forget exactly now, but it was like his wife was there or something that cheated on him all this stuff, and like, so he was acting like he was there. She was like, sla like slamming cabinets, acting like she was like all this stuff. And I just, I don't know what he said to me, but I didn't do what he said. And he's like, you stupid American. He's like, just go. You need to go home. I'm like, yes, send me home, please. I want to go home. I'm like, stop fucking calling. Nobody believes that your wife is there. I'm like, you're lying to us all. You're just fucking. So I just called him out. I remember everything I said. <laughs> so all the girls, after I hung up, they're all, they start clapping. They're like, oh, my God, thank you so much. We could never say anything because he calls and he makes this fake story up all the time and, like, whatever. And then I guess, like, a week later, uh, the guys in the office called me. They're like, yeah, he had a complaint because <laughs> he didn't get to hear your call again. And they said, because he gets to hear the call to hear what the complaint is. And they were dying laughing. They're like, you just... <laughs> Sorry, but no, like you well, get a lot of calls that are weird. People shouldn't like, be mean. Like, well, that's what it is. It's like he just pushed to line and this is I'm like, wait a minute. I'm doing you a service, man. And you're the, I, you called me and I'm not trying to be whatever. But if you want to go, it's four o'clock in the morning. I got an hour left and I don't give a fuck what's going on. I'm actually going on a flight in two days to go fuck yourself. I, man, I wish I knew his name. The, I would come the, to me when I leave some, after the episode. I'm like, sometimes guys will call in and they'll start saying things that I'm not comfortable with. So if they say something, I'll say, um, I'm not comfortable with that. And then if they keep saying it, I just literally... Like a name I, or something? Or yeah, like, like or in, asking like, you to do so, like a certain thing? Yeah, just a, a, like... <sighs> I'm not a person that you can say, I'm going to use and abuse you. Yeah. It's really disrespectful to yeah, like Or certain either. names like that you can call me. Like, I don't even want to repeat the money. But, yeah, you yeah. know, I'm respect Deme me. Like demeaning. Like yeah, things that are just not. Yeah, like, yeah really I get it. demeaning names. And I, they might say it because it might turn them on. And I'll be like, okay, I, that's not what you call me. And the guys that are okay with that will be like, okay, I'm sorry. I go, oh, that's okay. Let's carry on. But the guys that are not okay with that. They will carry on, so I literally pull me headphones out and I keep the phone there, and then I just go and do something else, and I just let the money run away with them, <laughs> and I'll just like put the headphones back in. Are they still talking? And then they'll say something, and then I'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> they'll carry on, uh -huh. and then they'll be like, uh, and I'll be that like, one more time. <laughs> I'll be like, okay, and then just move the headphones away from them again, and just wait till the money runs out. I'm just like, you know, that that's Smart. why you want to talk to me. That's okay. I'm just going to use all your cash and I'm not going to listen to a thing that you're saying. Hey, he's a smart <laughs> businesswoman. I can't be mad at that. So you talked about you had a radio show and now you currently have a podcast. You talk about all these money making things. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So Tanya Tay presents Mills Making Money podcast. Um, it was just something that I decided to do. You know, it was 
women, you know, I'm not going to call you a MILF, Alexis, but, you, you know, we, I love how that's like a, a cautiously dirty, I'm not going to say <laughs> I'm just you're a like, MILF. No, some people are offended. But some people are offended when you use, it, it's in porn, it's like a round off, and you're a it's lot like a you're dirty, a lot, It's like you're a, a dirty word in porn. You're a lot younger like, than me. I feel like for me, I feel like it's theoretically should only be used when you have a kid. If I had a kid and I was whatever, then I would be a MILF because I would be a mom <laughs> someone wanted to fuck. But I'm not a mom, but I'm not offended by any words ever because it's just, you know, touche. <laughs> well, so it's like women, I could just say women making money. And for me, I just, you know, I just wanted to share some of the things that I was doing. And, you know, people are asking me different questions. And I just wanted to put a, like, a little bit of positivity in it. You yeah. know, for me, with the lockdown and COVID and we wasn't able to do stuff. And, you know, a lot of us were we're stuck and we, we couldn't get out. So what did we do? You know, we focused, we started, you know, making money in different ways. You know, you doing your OnlyFans, you've got your, your podcast as well, you know, different ways that we're making money. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to share it. So that's really where it come from. It's a, it's a positivity podcast. It's a little bit about what I've been doing. Um, Vivid Radio is no more. Sirius took us off. We were too dirty, let's be honest. You know, yeah, I mean, we, honestly, we I was surprised it was on there for as long as it was. So was I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I mean, it was great. It was a great time. I mean, you were on there way longer than I, I had. I think, honestly, maybe like two years, if even that, I remember. But yeah. it was definitely a great time. But I was, yeah. I it, was you, you knew it was coming to the end. You really did know it was coming. And so I kind of got the podcast. I recorded some episodes. And when finally it was like, okay, we're coming to an end. We really yeah. are. It was like, oh, and now I've got this podcast and now I'm going to kind of put it online. Um, so it's just different things. You know, there's different things that we have to do to protect ourselves. You know, I love different guests. And one guest was talking about piracy. Someone was talking about, you know, using YouTube, how to brand themselves. Um, something about, you know, wellness. What can you do for your own personal wellness? That's um, awesome. ju just different topics each time, you know, and I've been asking the fans if they've got like any questions or any topics that they want me to talk about, mm -hmm. they can definitely suggest it to me. So it's on all of the regular podcast platforms. So okay. they just can Google it. It's really easy. Tanya Tay presents MILF's Making Money podcast. It's on, you know, it's probably all the same ones that they're going to hear this one on. Yes. <laughs> so if you're listening to this, yes. Alexis Texas. Um, what's the full name of your podcast? It's Private Talk with Alexis Texas. Thank you. Yes. So when you're sitting on Private Talk with Alexis Texas, just go into the search after you've listened to the episode yes. and then type in Tanya T presents MILF's Making Money and then you can go and listen to that as well. I love that. Um, and I've also got something set up, speakpipe.com slash Tanya Tate. Um, like guys or girls can go on there and leave a message and I'm kind of picking the best ones. It's a bit difficult to try and not get them where they're full of like porn stuff. Don't leave me a porn message because like take that to Sex Panther. Yes. But if you want to, you know, if you want to say something, you know, like your work rocks or you want to do something constructive or a suggestion or something, go and leave it. Speakpipe.com slash Tanya Tate. You might hear yourself on an upcoming episode of Milf's Making Money Ooh, podcast. Oh, you heard her private talk. Go and support her. Show her some love. Listen to her knowledge. I feel like knowledge is power. The more that we can put it out there. For anybody who's listening, if it's someone in the industry, not in the industry, even though, you know, everybody with, you know, the content providers, I feel like there's yes. a lot of information just that we don't know that we learn every day. And sometimes, you know, you just, everything, it's good. It's good to know more information. Always. Yeah, I think sharing knowledge, you know, and getting other people that have got knowledge to give out it's just giving other people a platform and you know whether you're a complete beginner at being a content creator or you you know you, you've been doing it for years you know you can do it with your eyes closed there's always something new that we're for learning sure. the technology or you know different platforms or whatever because a lot of them do are really similar to each other but it's also finding what works for you and your fans too because I feel like yeah. that's also a big thing because like sometimes like with my fans and Psych Panther, I don't know if it necessarily would work as well with me because I'm not always available to text. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not, you know, for me, it's more better with like the customs and doing that. So it's like, I have time to do those things and do them in a timely manner where it's still engaging with my fans, you know, myself. Yeah. Um, but that's what I love about it. It's like everybody has kind of their own lane and their fans like their own thing. If it's mommy talk, if it's booty talk, mine's, I get a lot of smothering, a lot of things, you know. I, I have to say, I, I remember very vividly being smothered by your ass. 
Who, I, me? <laughs> no. Exotica convention. We did that flashlight wrestling. Do you remember the where we were? Re- <laughs> yeah, it was like a ball pit of like little willies, mm-hmm. little squishy willies, wasn't it? Yeah. And we were kind of like just rolling around. And then in the end, you just kind of sat on my face. Now it's just like, I think you I'm loved gonna, it. I, I did. I loved it. I was just like, okay, I'm just going to tap out now. Because it just seems so much fun. All the guys. And I was just like, yeah. it would be silly for me to try and take your big booty off my face right now. I'm glad you didn't. It was a nice seat to have. You know, you had to bounce the booty, bounce the booty. That's like the great finisher. You just give it, you know, a little, a little booty jiggle, a little booty jiggle. Yeah. But I love it. All right, guys, I hope you are loving this episode. We're going to take a little bit of a break, and we're going to get back to my favorite part of Truth with Texas. So we will stay tuned. All right, all right, we are back, Private Talk, and we have Miss Tanya Tate, and we are going to play Truth with Texas. All right, Miss Tanya Tate, we're going to play Truth with Texas. We're going to have four aces. Each suit is going to be a different type of question. We're going to get to know you a little bit more. All right, pick a card, ma'am. All right. It's Ace, Ace of, of hearts. hearts. It's a romantic question. Would you consider yourself a romantic? Yes, I'm romantic, I'd say. I think my perfect date would be um, going for dinner, having some drinks, going to watch some live theater, and then after dinner, a aperitif. Ooh, romantic. I like it. Do you like sexting? Oh, I love sex, dude. <laughs> <laughs> See how like, loaded, you know, loaded that question is? You know, but Sex Panther, you're talking about that. You know, some people don't just do it for work. We do it because we like work and pleasure. So you can oh, really be into it because you're really good at it. I, I, I love sexting, like continuously sexting to my phone. And also, you know, in the OnlyFans as well, in the DMs, you can slide in there. And we can get a little bit of dirty talking, you know, or spoil. I like spoiling them back. I like spoiling people back too. I like when yeah. they spoil me with money and tips and we spoil them back with dirty talk and things exactly. like that. Exactly. You know, it's yes. a win-win situation. I definitely love the DMs part of it because it's like, for me, I like the like, quote unquote, back and forth, like the exchange of like the yeah. dirty talk of a story. That's fun. Yeah. That's fun. Giving or receiving? Receiving. Receiving. What are your biggest turn-ons? Somebody that's got very good hygiene, um, they know how to treat a lady um, and just someone that's, a, you know, a nice person inside. Favorite position? It's a missionary. Hey. <laughs> Your least favorite position? Oh, least favorite position. I know there has to be one least favorite. Mine always was a go-to. Oh. was like, I'm not doing pile driver. I don't know who made that position. Who, how does that even exist in real life? And who does that? It's not my favorite. Uh, I, I guess more so what you're doing it on. You know, if you've got, like, your knees are stuck on a table or something like that. <laughs> it, it depends how it feels. Favorite place to be kissed? Oh, in Thomas, between Texas. From my boobs all the way down in between my legs. Ooh. Booty shorts or thong? <laughs> Booty shorts. Booty. Why is that so funny? I like it. Because everyone expects you to say thong, don't thong. they? But it's just like, you I know, know. I go booty shorts. Booty shorts. That's are more given conf- for me, I guess, because I have a booty. I don't really know. Everyone thinks I just put booty shorts in. My butt swallows thongs, you know what I mean? Yeah, Which is it's good sometimes. It, it, well, it just kind of gets stuck up there, doesn't <laughs> it? And you just like, you know, you're trying to pull it out. And <laughs> it's all bad news. <laughs> First thing that sexually attracts you to someone? Their eyes. Their eyes. Mm. Do you have a romantic favorite or a favorite romantic movie? I, I, I remember when I was younger, I used to love Pretty Woman. <laughs> it's romantic in a different kind of way yeah she went to the races and she got to be with a handsome guy hey it all worked out in the end it all worked out lingerie or naked lingerie Mm -hmm. foreplay or sex foreplay i definitely like someone that knows how to touch me touch me please me do all those things to miss tanya i want to Oh, she's singing to me. <laughs> All right, next card. Let's see what else we can get out of you. Oh. 
Ace, Ace of Spades. It's a naughty question, and we love the naughty questions here at Private Talk After Dark. Oral sex, sloppy or clean? Um, are you a nice, proper, nice mommy? Or are you a messy mommy? Uh, normally clean, but, you know, if someone wants it really messy, if they really want it messy, I can do it. So are you spitting it or are you swallowing it, if you had a choice of yourself? If, if I'm doing that to the guy... Mm -hmm. I just want all the sloppy. To, if it's it's just gonna come back all over his cock, just all let it all drip cock. down. Loud or quiet during an orgasm? Well, if you get me really turned on, I can get very loud. <gasps> <laughs> I like how loud she can be. <gasps> I know. Do you know what Alexis Texas is gonna want me to do it? But you know what? I save that for my customs. Ooh, you heard her. You should get a custom because I think that her loudness, I sat on her face one time and I couldn't hear it because it was muffled, but I'm sure if her mouth was available for screaming, it would have been really, really loud. <laughs> so go and get a custom. It will be really fun. <laughs> have you ever touched yourself in public? Yes. Plenty of times. I'm sure about that. <laughs> Doggy or missionary? Missionary. One night stand. Have you ever had a one night stand in your life? Yes. Oh, <laughs> naughty. Lube or spit? Spit. Dirty. Yeah. Ever faked an orgasm? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I've faked an orgasm. Um, but I, you know what? I prefer not to. I prefer, I prefer to just make the partner do to me what I really like. Yes, communicate yourself to enough to where you're like, because at this point, we already know what our bodies need. It's like, if you get me to that point, I'm going to take you over the edge. Yeah. Over the edge. Push me right over. All right, next card. As we push you right over to the next card, Miss Tanya Tate, what do we have? A club is a kinky question. Ooh. Favorite time of day to have sex? Morning. I'm morning. definitely a morning person. Bondage, yes or no? On me, no. No, so you like to be the one who's tying people up. Oh, yes. Taking your little hands, running it down, you while they're tied to your submission. Yeah, I give them a little spanking while they're tied up as well. Mm. Favorite sex toy? Hitachi. That's just like a given. <laughs> it's like That's my boyfriend right now. <laughs> His name is Bob. Forwards and backwards is the best name ever. You know, he never disappoints as long as he's charged. Yeah. <laughs> then it's not bad. Do you like to be spanked? No, definitely not. No spanking for Miss Tate. I do the spankings around mm -hmm. here. I love it. Most number of times you've had sex in one day. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> so many. Mm -hmm. I did a Tanya Tate sex tour of Ireland, Tanya Tate sex tour of Scotland, and I'm sure. You were just getting it in everywhere around Scotland? Yeah, there was a I lot of guys. It. There was an island All in one day? Or is it just There like was quite a few in one day, yeah. Like three, four, what are we looking at? Uh, five, six, she said seven. Five. <laughs> I love how the octave <laughs> of your voice changed. I know. <laughs> then we brought one back for some more. And oh. yeah. Do you have any fetishes? Fetishes? I, I guess I as a lot of my stuff is taboo. I love like the mummy role play. Okay. I like the foot fetish. But do you do you masturbate to that stuff when you're trying to get off for your own time, or what is like in your repertoire of things? If you're like, I want to get myself off, fuck the customs, whatever. What is getting Tanya Tate off? Uh, do you know? I don't necessarily. It doesn't have to be anything um, really deep. Yeah. Sometimes it could just be someone that I'd seen hot on the internet that day, and you're just in the shower, and I'm like, oh fuck. I can just think of them with me here yeah. right now. Your it's, imagination just goes to that yeah, space. Yeah, and it just, whatever I want them to do to me at that time, I'm just going for All it. All in. Have you ever masturbated to any of my pictures? Any encounters? Uh, any times you saw me at Exotica booth and you're like, you know what? Mm. <laughs> She's like, I, not today. I, do you know, I have had memories of you sitting on my face at Exotica. Alexis. You have like flashbacks where it's like, Bam! I can't see, but I love it. But I don't know what's going yeah. on. Yeah, it's, it's. I'll it's, take that. It's that's come, that's it's definitely come, it's great come for me. It's through my mind quite a few times. I, I will take that with with <laughs> pride. I will wear it with a badge of honor. I definitely will. Where it is, let's see. Hmm. 
We've already done all these kinky things. You're, you're on my kinky list. You're, we've already <laughs> talked about these kinky things. She's like, um, mommy's very kinky. Mommy is kinky. I like the kinky. Have you ever watched porn without masturbating? Yes. I, I, do you know, actually I have, when I was going to get into porn, I watched porn without masturbating. I was sitting with a guy and he put it on his big TV and he was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, mm, yes. was Was he trying to get you into the, like the moment of it? Or was it just like, he would just put it on cause he was going to like just I, I ta- think, a conversation starter. Like how does that I work? think he thought that I was going to get turned on by it, but okay. I, you know. Did you at all? No, because I started looking at the porn in a different way. Like, okay. I would like to be on that screen. Mm. My mind like really flipped. Yeah. It's, it's from I'm supposed to be turned on right now to actually I can put myself there in that situation. That's hot though. You're just like, hey, um, that should be me. And I'm going to leave you now. And I'm going to go be Tanya T. So bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's about kind of how it went down. I love that. I love that for you. <laughs> All right, the last one is Ace of Diamonds. We've got a spicy question. We're all a little spicy here, too, but we've been doing, I agree. I feel like I haven't bit you too hard. I feel like we're playing that, you know, you're giving me all the things I want. Anal sex, yes or no? On camera, no. Personal life, you're like, uh, maybe. Yeah, (laughs) I've done it in my personal life. I guess I never did it on camera because I always would think it'd be like having a Coke can shoved up your ass for 30 minutes. I feel you. So you didn't think it could be as like intimate where you're controlling it and it's like your kind of rhythm of things and so it'd just be seen to the world. And it's all that prep, isn't it? It's like there's too much prep and starving yourself. I'm just like... (laughs) You're like, I'm just not going to do it. I'm okay with it. And that's the thing is like what's great about everybody's career, everybody can do something a little bit different. Like, you know, even myself, I did... Uh, anal scenes and I've done a couple of them but it wasn't something I overly did because it wasn't something I was overly into Mm. I enjoyed the scenes I did and I definitely like I did them for certain movies and things that were really special to me yeah and again it was I was in the moment of those like those hot sexual like fantasies that I wanted to like live out so it's like again time and place and like how you evolve and what you want it. I, I would like to do my first day and but me totally controlling it, mm-hmm. you know? And that's cool. It's like now as you have the OnlyFans platform to you be able to do that and direct it the way that you want to and make that money, girl. Your fans want to see it. If that's something you want to go down the right road further along the line. It's but not, right now... It's not off the table. I like that. Not off the table, but right now we're sticking with the ladies. With the ladies. Yes. Okay, so... Do you have a celebrity hall pass? If this celebrity came about and you just was like, it didn't matter anything, you mattered, you could just you could just be with this person and there's nothing else mattered in the world. Oh, God. I Girl or know. guy? I don't know. Don't it's know? Like, there's too many. Too many choices. <laughs> <laughs> there's too many hall people in this world that if they'd be like, should we get it on? I'd be like, yeah. Can I just put my iPhone on, please? <laughs> I just want to record it. <laughs> you're so funny craziest place you've ever had sex um craziest place was in london freezing cold dark nightclub and it was some scaffold and i had to get on this scaffold and kind of like hold on while it was a boy boy girl scene it was mm, a bit of a swinging sp- through the rafters hey yeah. <laughs> bit, of a, bit of a spit roast <laughs> the spit roast oh spit no roast. what is the spit, the spit roast? roast so it's like I, it's like you know the chicken, you know, where it has one going in one end and something coming out the other. It's like, oh. I think it's like a rotisserie chicken you'd kind of call it in America, but I think in England we'd call it a bit more of a spit roast. I never heard of that before, <laughs> and I feel like maybe that's, a, is it, I don't know, a new thing? I don't know. It might be British. <laughs> it's probably British. <laughs> what is something completely off limits in the bedroom? Completely off something. limits. Something you would never do, nothing you want to try. Maybe you tried it and you don't want to do it anymore. ATM. ATM. I did it once, and I will not try it again. It was with a scene for Rocco Sofredi. And, and ATM pro- means what for the private talk listeners out there? Ass to mouth. He takes ass his dick mouth. out of the other girl's ass and sticks in my mouth, and he promised me it would be clean. And was it clean? Nope. What? So someone just two <laughs> there different was poop colors. In your mouth. No, there was two different colors coming on there. And the, the girl, she... I'm so sorry. Uh, that would traumatize me. I would... Um, so she basically, in essence, yeah, she... Yeah. It, <laughs> it was not clean. It was... And I was 
telling him to wipe her. And yeah, anyway. Yeah, I did it once. I tried it once. I'm good. Yeah, you're good. We're, we're, <laughs> we, we're, we don't want you to go there anymore, Tiny Tay. We want to keep, keep you out of that. Keep you out of all of that. Let's see. Have you ever had pity sex? Had sex with someone that you're like, mm, yeah, I don't want to, but you maybe did it anyways? Probably. <laughs> you're like, when was the time? Have you ever cock blocked a friend? Um, I can't think. I can't think. I don't feel it. like you're a cock blocking friend. I, I feel like you would encourage the. You'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna wait right here. You go. You go have fun, honey. You, you know what? I've never. Re- I've never been one of them where I'm gonna be like go after the guy that my friend is really into. If she's into him, I'm gonna help her get it. Get them. Yeah. yeah. And if you teamwork. If, yeah. If and if you want me to be there to help you, I'll be there to help you. But I'm not gonna take him away from you. I love that. It's girl empowerment. Just like go get the dick, girl. Go yeah. get it. Go sit on it. Plenty. Go ride it. There's go plenty. do what you want to do. There's there is. plenty of dicks to go around. There's plenty of dicks to go around. You heard Miss Tanya Tate. Thank you so much for taking the time and coming on Private Talk After Dark. I appreciate you so much. It was great catching up with you. Can you please tell us where we could find all the things that you are doing right now from your OnlyFans, your Instagram, anything that you want to plug to Private Talk listeners? Am I saying it to you or the You camera? can say it to over here. I'm saying it to you. Yes, I'm saying it to you. Like, to, talk to them. You dirty bastards. You know that you want more of me. Go to my Twitter, d- twitter.com slash Tanya Tate. I'm verified on there. And on there, you'll find all the links to all the other places. My podcast, milfsmakingmoney.com. It's also on all the regular podcast platforms. Um, the places where you really want to play with me. Sexpanther.com slash Tanya Tate. You can sext, you can video call, you can call me. We can do custom movies, swap pictures, videos. I'm also on OnlyFans, OnlyFans.com slash Tanya Tate. Get on there, slide into the DMs, spoil me, and I'll be spoil you back with a whole load of fun. And I just can't wait to get off with you. Oh, you heard her. Go show some love and support. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Make sure that you comment and like. And until we meet again.